Hello, this is Matt Robeson, and I'm from Savannah, Georgia. I'm going to do a little quick uh, tutorial on submixes for uh, introduction to music production through Coursera.org. Um, I'm using Ableton Live version 8 here. A um, couple of quick things if you're not familiar with Ableton. Um, this is called Session View, and uh, you got, you've got your audio channels and MIDI channels here, your sends and the master. Um, you can kind of play around with loops in here in real time and just kind of uh, come up with ideas. Uh, you can toggle between session view and arrangement view with these buttons or you can hit tab. Um, these are the same channels but they're laid out more like your normal audio editor that you may be familiar with. Um, time moves from left to right um, and uh, these are the same channels like I said. Here's your sends and master down at the bottom. Um, I'm going to mainly work in session view for this tutorial, but um, same applies in either view really. Um, these four channels are MIDI, and we'll cover those in a second. These two are audio, and um, audio routing in Ableton is pretty straightforward actually, which is one of the reasons I like it. Um, these are your audio ends right here, and your MIDI ends if it's a MIDI channel. Um, this is where you would uh, bring in your um, instrument or microphone or whatever. Um, your audio outs are here and as you can see all the um, audio is routed to the master channel. Um, creating a submix in Ableton is pretty straightforward. You don't have to, we don't really, you don't really use the term bus in Ableton that I'm aware of. You really can just um, route the audio to another channel. So I mean a couple ways you could do this in, in Ableton. Um, I could create a empty audio channel and then just route the audio to it thereby making a submix, but Ableton actually makes it a little easier. You can select a, cha a channel, hold shift down, and select another channel, and you could do this you know, to your heart's content. Um, and then right click, choose group tracks, or you can hit control G, and you'll see it took these two channels, routed the audio to this brand new uh, empty audio channel that it created. Um, this is your submix, basically. Um, the sound from here is routed to your master. So if I were to mute this and then hit play on one of these loops, you're not going to hear anything because the audio from these has been rerouted here. I'll turn this back on. Now you can hear the audio from both of them. Um, I'm not going to go over audio too much because I want to jump over here to the MIDI. The same concepts apply, which is why I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these four MIDI channels. And I'm going to click the wrong button first. Group them. Now you can see the audio from these MIDI channels is routed to this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename this to drums. All right, now um, these are just little loops I made, kick drums, hats and cowbell, etc. Um, if I go ahead and play these. You can see that um, they're playing here. Um, I could adjust the volume um, individually for each, you know, set of drum sounds, or I can control the master with this. See that brings all of them down. Or if I thought there was just a little too much cowbell, you could never have enough cowbell. Just bring that down some. Um, another cool thing about groups in uh, Ableton is, I c as you see, I could start these uh, loops by just hitting the individual play buttons. But if you want to start the whole row here, or your whole group, you can hit play on the master channel. It's not the master channel, but the uh, submix channel. Um, and obviously, again, you would uh, you can apply your 
individual effects here. I've got like a compressor and a equalizer on this channel and these are all very similar. They each have their own sort of little setup. So you can tweak these things to where you like them, but then you can put this, you know, effects on like the EQ or the compressor on the main submix group and affect the overall sound and just tweak things until you like it. So you can get very specific. Um, another cool thing, I'll just cover uh, sends real quick. Um, I've got a ping pong delay on this send channel, this return channel, and reverb here. Um, you can create more return tracks at will by right clicking, or if you know the, sh the keyboard shortcuts, you can do it that way. Um, once I created this third one, I don't know if you noticed, but this other button showed up down here, and if I were to create another one, you'd see a fourth button. These are your, this is how you toggle between post fader and pre fader. See? By default, it goes to post, which is what most people would use um, in most situations, uh, unless you're, you know, trying to do live mixing uh, at a show or something like that. You may need to change things uh, for the monitoring purposes. Um, now, uh, cool thing here is uh, I'm going to start play on this and you'll see that if I change the send knobs on an individual channel it'll just affect that but obviously if I change it on the group it'll affect the whole group so here we go add a little reverb on the hi-hats and the cowbell maybe a little delay on the snare And that's just affecting the individual channels, but here's the, if I bring up the reverb on, an, uh, on the entire drum sound. And the same would apply for any number of effects that you could uh, insert on a sin channel. Um, you could, in fact, create entire, you know, effects racks if you want, where you have multiple effects, you know. Um, I've actually got ping pong delay and a equalizer here so that the uh, low end doesn't get too crazy. Um, that's pretty much how to do a submix in Ableton. Um, hopefully this was fairly clear. Um, I'm sure there's more I could go over, but I'm probably past the five minute mark already. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next